Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Fox again. I'm back from the dead. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys an interesting league starter that I'm personally going to be playing and I'm not recommending it to you guys in any type of way. Um, I just thought that it was something really unique and really interesting and I kind of wanted to bring my thoughts to the table and see what you guys think about it. So first off, this is going to be for Solo Cell Found and I'm going back to Resident Righteous Fire Sleeper because of the new incorporation of uh, grinding gear games adding the timeless jewels onto the passive tree really kind of allows you to warp so many different builds so this build is going to be the seven keystone mana rf hierophant in the past you know i've played several different righteous fire builds mainly all of them centering around life pools you know for the longest time i've played rf there's only been one way to scale it you get life and or you get es or you get life and es right but now and i think even a couple patches ago they changed righteous fire so that you can scale it with plus the level which means the higher level your righteous fire the more damage it does also the more damage your scorching ray will do because of the multiplier of the spell damage so with this character our goal is to scale righteous fire with plus the level now I want to talk a little bit about the seven keystone and point out a couple of things here. This is a very convoluted build and will only work under certain circumstances. So let us begin. With Mind Over Matter, 30% of the damage you take from Righteous Fire will go back to your uh, mana pool, right? Only 30% though. So we still got to deal with 70% on our life. But then as Hierophant, with Divine Guidance, 40% of the damage you take now goes to the mana pool. If you can manage to get a Cloak of Defiance, that will take it all the way to 50% of the damage you take. If you only have a 4k life pool and you have no energy shield, it's actually not that much that you're degenning because remember, we're not an 11,000 life jug. But 50% of the damage will go to our mana pool, right? In the early game, that will be a little bit of a pain in the ass to sustain, but that is where things like Supreme Ego comes in. A new Supreme Ego will make it so that our Clarity will get a huge multiplier on flat regen, right? So normally Clarity gives like 30 flat mono regen. Supreme Ego can take it all the way to like 45, almost 50, which is flat mono regen, which is huge. There are very few sources of flat mono regen. And since we have so much percentage mono regen scaling, we can really get a huge amount, right? So let's go back to it. 50% of the damage we take goes to our mana pool. The other 50% goes to the life pool. Well, how do we cover the life pool? That is where the Legion Keystone Agnostic comes in. Up to 20% of our maximum mana will go towards our life pool to keep us topped off. Any extra maximum mana that we're not using will be used to heal our life pool when we take damage, right? So that is pretty much the bread and butter of where this build works. A lot of people are confused on it, but the build does work. It just takes a bit to get going. So essentially, by scaling maximum mana and mana regen, you are covering all of your defenses from Righteous Fire. That is when you have to learn to balance plus the maximum resistance versus your mana pool versus your mana regen. You don't care about life at all. The other interesting thing about this build is because we're using Agnostic, we don't need to run a Life Flask because mana gives us life. Any extra mana we heal means that's more life that's being healed from Agnostic, up until a maximum of 20% per second. This is basically going to heal you so fast, you will not really be able to react essentially to how fast it would heal you. You just need to make sure your mana can survive the Agnostic Drain which basically means we're essentially permanently scaling mana. Now, the other part about this that's unique is with Hierophant, we get Divine Guidance, which gives us Transfiguration of Mind, which means this number right here, this 340%, gives us a little bit over 100% increased damage. And that increased damage is global, which means the increase will work for Righteous Fire, and it will work for Scorching Ray, which is really unique. The only bad thing is the Sanctuary... It's not even bad, but Sanctuary of Thought gives us a shit ton of energy shield, but the energy shield gets completely voided by Agnostic, which just means the degen will not be nearly as much. 
Now to talk about some other things. Utilizing Dynamo, Dynamo will allow you to have a huge burst of mana that you can get back by using a guard skill, which is cool because normally a guard skill like, say, Steel Skin, you would use to negate damage, but sometimes you can't always predict when you're going to take a large spike. So even if you use this after you get hit, your mana is going to sink down because A, you've got Mind Over Matter, so when you get hit, half the damage goes to your mana. B, um, Agnostic is immediately pulling more of your mana to try to heal your life. And then you click your Steel Skin, which heals 20% of your mana back over one second, while still getting the active guard for about 2,000 damage block. So that's pretty unique, so I like that about this. Then to, cover, uh, to uh, cover some of the other keystones, we've got Glancing Blows because we want to use a Staff. The reason for staff is we're playing SSF, and staff is one of the easiest ways to get plus the level and scale your damage. So using a staff, we get access to some very easy block nodes. Whirling Barrier for four points gives us 10% block and 10% spell block, right? The other part about this is if we go over towards here, we get Mystic Bulwark, which gives us 6% spell block, and we get Enigmatic Defenses, which is a little bit more right? So, if we look at our calculator over here, in the calculator, you can see we've got 35 block and 25 spell block. With glancing blows, this goes to 70 block and 50 spell block with very, very little investment. The investment simply being, um, god damn it, chat, why are you trying to kick W me? Uh, <laughs> the simple investment being the glancing blows and what we've allocated on the skill tree for block, right? So, the next part is, because we're going to have such a low life pool, I have opted to acquire Unwavering Stance. Unwavering Stance will make it so that we cannot be stunned. So our 3.5k life pool, in SSF it's probably going to be even lower until we get some gear. We basically cannot be stunned, which is honestly fantastic. So I like that. And then coming down here, we get the option of grabbing Tireless, which is really just for life, uh, and then Arsonist. Which means, since we're grabbing Arsonist down here, we have the ability to anoint quite a few things. I can't go over the best thing to anoint because I need to play my build to see what I need to scale it. But you've got, as an example, Breath of Flames, which is really good. You can do uh, Divine Judgment, but it's only 50% Ellie. Uh, you can get, actually, a unique one, Commander of, or Command of Steel, which gives you 70% increased damage because we have 70% block. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool options. Um, and yeah, and that's pretty much the general sense of how we're going to get the character scaling. The only problem would be damage, which is why we are looking towards a Searing Touch. Because if you put RF in a Searing Touch, it gets plus 2 level, and you get 50% fire damage over time multiplier, along with fire damage and cast speed, which pretty much all works for your Scorching Ray, which is really cool too. Um, since obviously we're using a Staff and a chess piece, that's two six links we can use. Uh, and then some other goals that I was talking about before, I don't have everything, but... Cloak of Defiance naturally is going to be fantastic because of the... Oh, that's Cloak of Flames. There we go. Cloak of... Wait, what? Cloak of Defiance. There we go. Gives us a huge boost of maximum mana, along with that extra 10% I was talking about. So that puts us at 50% conversion. And then you get 1% mana regen per second, which is great if you have like a 5 to 7k mana pool. Also, it's important to note that if you can get mana recovery anywhere, whether it would be through a... Uh, a Clarity Watcher's Eye Jewel or a Shaper Crafted Belt. Mana Recovery is a multiplier to your overall mana regen, which is literally like, think if you're playing Life RF, Life Recovery. It's, it's, it's super good, right? And then the other one is just going to be Adziri's Foible, which is a very early... Am I stupid? Here we go. A very early piece to get, which gives 100 mana up to 24% max mana, mana regen, and then items and gems have 25% reduced attribute requirements, which is kind of just like a nice little little cherry on top, which is basically going to help you with strength requirements if you can't hit them, which you should be able to, but dex requirements uh, for anything dex related. So that's kind of nice. And that's pretty much the rundown of the build. I will go into a few more things that will kind of be like an icing on top. By playing Hierophant and having an unreserved mana pool, which is what we're aiming towards. Remember, clarity is a flat amount. And if you want to use an aura that's not clarity, you could use like um, an Essence Worm Malevolence, I think, which is the multiplier to damage over time. So you have 
Sanctuary of Thought, which is 1% increased area of effect per 50 unreserved mana. So if you just add two zeros, that's a hundred per a hundred percent increased area of area of effect. <laughs> God damn it, chat. Uh 100% increased AoE, which is fantastic for RF. And you get Illuminated Devotion, which is another 25%. So that's 125%, which means you pretty much don't need to scale any form of AoE on the tree. Then you get Arcane Blessing whenever you use essentially a skill that hits, which will be anything that you're using to apply Elemental Equilibrium, whether it is Orb of Storms or, for example, any form of Brand would work well for that. Um, and then, in general, you're probably going to have like Flame Dash on uh, Flame Dash supported with Arcane Surge. So that'll be up all the time, which gives you elemental immunity, sorry, ailment immunity, which means your flasks can pretty much be almost whatever you want. You just have to cover bleed and, uh, what's the other one? Bleed and warding, which one of them will most likely be covered with an enduring mana flask. So you're pretty much set, which is awesome. There's a lot of flexibility in this build, which I'm really, really happy for. And the ceiling feels really high on how to scale. So I'm pretty stoked for it. It seems like something unique. I didn't really see myself playing this Path of Exile League, I'll be honest, but having this new stuff on the passive tree really makes me feel like SSF is going to feel so much more enjoyable, and the ceiling for scaling is still there, because you can still get a Timeless Jewel, and you can still do some crazy stuff on top of what's on the tree, and then of course Delirium, which I didn't really play, um, I've got the option to scale with Delirium anywhere towards here, and, you know, as we get really good cluster jewels, we can start shaving off points on the tree that are not as efficient as the cluster jewels. So anyway, that's pretty much about it. I just wanted to give you guys the rundown. Of course, this is not a full path of building. This is just a theorized tree for what I'm going to be playing as I play through the league. Hopefully, I'll be playing for at least one to two weeks. Um, I will update you guys with my progress and everything else. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow.